So we need to talk about configuring your RDS database with Elastic Beanstalk because you actually have two options. You can add a database inside or outside your Elastic Beanstalk environment, and you might not even be aware that you're doing it if you're setting it up. So uh, it's important to know the difference. So let's talk about inside the Elastic Beanstalk environment. So when you go to create an environment through the console, uh, you'll have the option to create a RDS database. And if you are doing that, that means it's going to be within the uh, Elastic Beanstalk environment. Now, um, the thing is, if you do this, that means whenever this environment is terminated for any reason, it will take out the database with it. So that means that generally this setup is for development environments. That doesn't mean you can't use it for production because as long as you're using in-place deployment mechanisms, so like let's say you use Immutable and stuff, that's gonna replace the EC2 servers. It's never going to uh, remove the RDS database, but if you, for whatever reason, delete that entire environment, your database is gone with it. Then on the other side, you have outside the Elastic Beanstalk environment. And the way you know you're doing this is you're creating your database first in RDS, and then you configure it with your EC2 instances that are in your, inside your Elastic Beanstalk environment. Now, when the Elastic Beanstalk environment is terminated, the database is going to remain because it wasn't created part of the EB environment. And so these are generally suited for production environments. Uh, and with this setup, you know, you generally are using blue-green deployment. You don't have to, but you totally can. I just want you to know uh, that distinction about inside and outside the environment.